Okie dokie, and we meet again. Video number five of our Move Language tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to take a look at loops. Let's not waste any more time and let's get started. So there is three types of loop in Move. There is a for loop, a while loop, and a plain loop. You are going to see the difference. What I'm gonna do, I am going to create a new Move file. So let me go ahead and create a new. I'm gonna call this sample for move all right let's start by defining the module now we will say sample four and we're going to be importing it's going to be the print from debug let's work with the first loop how to write a for loop in move we're going to tie function sample for loop and in this for loop, what I'm going to do, I am going to build a function that we will pass an integer that will dictate the intervals or the iteration in that for loop, okay? So I am going to say count and then we'll define u64 as the type, right? And let's return the value of a sum. So we are going to be adding up values and we'll return that and we'll print that on the test, okay? So let me go in u64, awesome. Okay, let's build this loop. I am going to be passing a value. This will be the count that we'll have on that loop to keep running. And now I need to prepare a variable that will be updated as we loop and we start looping based on the count that we provide. So let's say value, let's define this to be zero. Let's write that for loop. So we do four and now we say I in, check this out, I in zero, then this right here, what I'm doing right now, it's a range. So we are specifying those two dots are defining this to be a range from zero all the way to my count, okay? Very important for you to understand this. Now, based on this for loop, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna open curly braces and now say value, update value. I wanna show you something very interesting. In this case, we are not going to increment. All we are going to do is we are going to count from zero all the way to this value, which means that it's going to be one, two, three, four. And pay close attention to the total value that we obtain at the end you are going to see, ah, oh, this is interesting. Don't worry, I got you. With that said, I am now going to return value. Now let's do a test function. We already know how to build that test. I'm gonna say test and let's define this function test for loop, okay? And then we'll say in this function sample, we're just gonna call that for loop that we wrote and let's pass 10, okay? But now I want to capture the return of that function, which will be the value added plus i. So let's do let result equals sample for loop. Let me go ahead and print. And by the way, I am going to grab this because we are not going to use that inside the module only for tests. And we know that if we want to do it that way, we have to do tests only, and then we'll have to grab this and paste it below and everyone is happy. Now I can say print and I'm going to point reference result and beautiful. I'm gonna also close this expression right here and boom, we're done. Let's open my terminal and let's test this out. Let me do aptos move test. Invalid function usage, unbound variable print. Why is that going on? This is sample two. Let me fix that. Go to sample two, sample two. You can actually comment a whole section by just doing forward slash asterisk and then you wanna close it down here, okay? Asterisk backslash. Got it? This should be it. Let me go back. Let's, uh, let's give it a shot and see what will happen. Okay, we got something. Ah, why is 45 the number? Let's see why. We are passing 10. We're not passing 45, right? So the expectation for us is to have 10. Well, you will be surprised that it's not that. Here's the thing. When we do this type of for loop and we do a specify range here, that means that it starts with zero, then continues to one, two and three. So what we're doing is we're grabbing value. Let me show you right here, comment bracket here. What we're doing is we're grabbing value, right? And value is zero. And I will also start at zero. Every time that for loop runs, this is what's gonna happen. I am going to be adding up value plus I. Value starts with zero, then value plus, now the next iteration is going to be zero, then one, okay? The next one, we got one, right? Because we incremented this, okay? So now the next one is gonna be one. 
equals to what? The expression now is going to be what? The value is going to be value again, right? Because we increment it times what? Times two. Remember, we started with a range. We're not just incrementing i. We are grabbing a range. So now it's one is two. So now the result is going to be three. So now I do three. And now it's going to be three times what? Which one is the next value? Three. We are going in order here from zero, one, two, three. You see what's happening now? Six. It's the way that we are setting up the logic is we are incrementing value by i, which means now the next value is going to be four, right? Now four is going to be 10. You see what's going on? So that's very important because what's going to define i is going to be this range here from zero all the way to the value, which is going to be 10. So I have to continue all this to 10 and the output at the end should be 45 after we added everything together. So how do we not have this result and instead just increment value by one? So all I have to do is change i to one. Save it here. I'm going to clear. I'm going to test. See, 10. There you go. OK, very important because we are dealing with a range. OK, let's continue. Now let's build a while loop. OK, while loop is a little bit different. We are going to say fun sample. Let me just bring this down so you're not confused sample while loop. We are also doing a count because we still have to build an expression that will define when it's going to stop, right? So we're still doing that. So it's going to be u64. And now we are also going to define a value. So we're going to say value equals zero. And now we have to say the while loop. Okay, so we have to define that while loop. The difference now is that instead of me defining i as whatever is the value in the range, now we have to manually define i and we have to update i as the while loop continues running. Else, if we don't do that, we're never going to end the loop. It's just going to go forever. Okay, we define i, let i64. We are going to say one. We type while and we are going to say if i is less or equals to count, then if it's matching this, then continue, else stop it. Okay. That being said, it's just going to continue running until this matches, then it stops. That's the expression. If I now do this, I'm going to say value, and we're just going to say the same statement value is plus one, right? And now I can define, I have to increment i, so then I stop the loop, else it's not going to stop. So we are going to say i equals i times one, right? So every time it runs, it continues adding up i until it reaches 10, whichever is the value that I'm passing. That's pretty much it. So we want to return value, so I want to say value. I'm going to save this and let's test it out. So now we have this test for loop. Now we are going to copy this. We're going to paste this here and now this will be while, okay? So while loop and then we'll say sample while loop, okay? The results should also be 10. And I expect the value. Ooh, I forgot to close the while loop. Let me go ahead and do that. I want to say here, and that should be it. We should be good. Let me go here. Let's see how we go. Onbound variable print. I forgot to add the test because this is the test function, else it's not going to do it. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So we obtained both uh, 10. So that means that it's also running as expected. Let's do the scenario where instead of me using one to increment value, I use i. We should obtain that. 45 value 55 oh yes because we already incremented i by one so if i go back here on the while loop i am not starting from zero like here in the for loop i am starting from zero in the while loop i started with one so that explains why but yeah you see it right so we'll just keep it in one and give it a shot again everything should be good beautiful okay finally let's work with loop this one is interesting okay so let me show you why let's do function sample loop okay this one, ladies and gentlemen, is very different from the other two because this one has no expression by default. I don't need to place any expression that will define how often it's going to iterate or it's going to stop. I have to manually stop it. I have to break it. I have to put an if else condition that will stop it right? Else it's going to run forever. It's going to be infinite. Very important to understand this. Let's build this. I'm going to say sample loop and we are also using that count and we are also going to return uh, u64. Okay. Now let's do the let value once again. I'm going to say value zero and we are also going to build that i because there's no expression here. Let's initiate with one and now let's just type loop. OK, so you type loop and whatever it's inside here, it's just going to continue running. OK, so you have to make sure that you stop it or else it's not going to end on the testing functionality with move. It's going to time out. With that said, I'm going to define value equals value 
times what? Times i. I can say that or I can say 1. And I am going to also increment i. Okay, so we are going to say i is equals to i times 1. Okay, now I have to say if i is equals to count, then stop it, right? So I have to define this to be something like an if and else. So then I stop it manually because there's no place to put that expression to stop it. Okay, so now I am going to say if i is bigger than count, then you're just going to break. Okay, we can break. Another option that I have is continue. If you do continue, it means that probably you found a value that you needed and you just want to stop that iteration from continuing, just continue with the next value. Special cases where you are going to need continue, not every time. So now if I do this, if I save this, by the way, I have to now pass value. So we are going to return value so that we can see what the result is going to be on this one. But it's very straightforward. It's just loop and whatever it's inside this, just going to continue and you have to manually break it somehow you have to like for example in my case i'm going to say if i gets higher than count which after 10 is going to continue but then after 10 is 11 then it stops because we provided 10 it's just going to stop it from executing okay now let's do it let's do that function so i'm going to do here i'm going to copy this and we are now going to say test loop okay this is just the normal loop and then we'll say sample loop okay and we'll pass 10 we'll save this and give it a shot Let's see. There we go. We have successfully completed all three loops. Awesome. Now it's time for a quest. Which of the following loop methods in move runs infinite since no default expression is required that defines a condition to stop it? Is it a for loop, a while loop, a loop, or all half expressions? Well, if you answer C, you are correct. Alrighty, we have reached the end of video number five. In video number six, we are going to work with error handling. See you on video number six.